Do expensive speakers sound better than cheap speakers? We're going to answer that after the intro. Hello, my friends. I'm Gene Della Sala with Audioholics. And I get this question all the time. Do more expensive speakers sound better than the cheap speakers? Is it worth spending more money to get better sound? Well, it depends on a lot of factors. I will tell you this much in general, the cheap or the very inexpensive speakers, the three things they give up to the more expensive and more elaborate designs is bass extension, maximum output, and cosmetics. So with that being said, we're in a pretty unique situation over the last five or 10 years. Loudspeaker design generally is getting a lot better than it was in the 70s and 80s. Back then, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of science applied to speakers. They just put drivers in boxes and put tweeters and woofers all over the box and a big baffle. It didn't matter. Well, thankfully, there's been a lot of science over the last couple of decades making speaker technology better, making the implementation better. And that's not to say that people still mess up designs because that still does happen. But if you look at what's happened in the last five or six years online, there's been some awesome awesome values in loudspeakers. You look at companies like Dayton Audio, we did a review of, of a bunch of their speakers, the 442, the MK442, and the 402. Really good speaker designs there for the money. You look at stuff like the Sony Core, which we just recommended in our $1,500 Amazon system. And again, a very great sounding speaker for the money that you couldn't get only 10 years ago. And there's a lot of other examples. Andrew Jones really pioneered a lot of the inexpensive speakers with the, um, with the Pioneers he first came out with, and then he did it with ELAC. And, you know, Infinity has got some great speakers for the money. Um, they took their trickle-down technology from their Revel lines and from their JBL lines, and they, you know, they brought it down into the more affordable realm. So all of these speakers, you know, for a few hundred bucks a pair, they really give you good, competent performance. You get decent drivers, you get good off-axis performance, you get a balanced sound for the most part, but they do still lack maximum output and they do tend to lack bass extension because that stuff costs money. Just like with amplifiers, if you want a lot of power in an amplifier, you need, for at least class A, B amplifiers, you need big heat sinks and you need a big power supply and power supplies cost money. The same thing happens with loudspeakers. Drivers are like mechanical pumps. And if you want to move a lot of air, you need a big driver, you need a lot of surface area, and you need a driver that could have a good you know, throw distance or an X max. And in order to do that, you need a driver that has good excursion capability, a good motor structure, you know, a big uh, voice coil so it can handle power. And that tends to come from the more expensive designs. So I would say, yes, money does tend to buy you better performance until you get to this point where you get to the really ridiculous esoteric stuff like you'd see at some of these two channel shows like Expona or, or you know, the um, stereophile shows or whatever. And they're showing you speakers that cost two million dollars a pair that just gets retarded. I mean, the laws of diminishing returns happen very quickly in electronics for consumer audio and to some extent, even loudspeakers. Now, that's not to say you can't get an incredible sounding speaker for 50 or 100 grand a pair that would basically, you know, be six or eight feet tall in a room and it would play at 120 dB and they'd be at very low distortion and you'd have a ton of bass, you know, real usable bass extension down to 15 hertz. I mean, those are the super towers. I'm guilty. I have a pair myself, the RBH Status ATs. I've never heard a speaker like it. I've listened to tons of speakers over the last 20 years of doing Audioholics, and there has never been a speaker of its equal in terms of bass performance and just the way it's able to project a naturally large soundstage while also being focused at the same time. But not everybody's got that kind of money to throw at speakers, and that's very understandable. And that's why in this day and age, you have bass management, and when you're setting up a home theater, instead of going for a speaker that's got a ton of bass, go for a speaker that's got very good mid, mid bass, mid range, and, and treble, and then supplement it with multiple subs, and you could approximate what it's like to have a flagship style, large hulking trophy speaker. So yes, money does matter, especially if you want to have better cosmetics in your speakers. If you don't want a generic looking box, it costs money to get a real wood veneer. 
it costs money to put a nice, um, you know, a baffle on the, on the speaker to make it look good, to have good finishes. All that stuff costs money. So not, all, not always does it mean that you're gonna spend more money and get better sound, but in generally speaking, if you stay within a family of products, if you stay with a certain brand, let's say you stay with a Harman brand, I like to bring them up a lot because they put a lot of science in their products. So if you look at an inexpensive Harman product like an Infinity Primus speaker, it's a decent speaker. It's got some issues. We've noted in my reviews, um, you know, they use a very inexpensive tweeter and it, that was a kind of compromised part of the design of that speaker. But for what that thing did for three or 400 bucks a pair, it's an incredible sounding speaker. It's very competent performance, but it's in no way at the level of a uh, Salon 2 or the new Revel Brillium speakers. I mean, the, um, the F228s, for example, those are 10 grand a pair. Of course, they're gonna sound better because they have much better driver structures. They have better crossovers in them. And the crossover is the brain of the speaker. And when you get budget speakers and you're spending a couple hundred bucks for a pair of speakers, the crossover is the first thing that suffers typically. And I've opened up boxes before, even from speakers that are four or 500 bucks a pair from brands you would think know better and they have good engineering, you open it up and there's no crossover on the mid-range. There's just a, a high-pass filter on the tweeter, like an electrolytic cap. I mean, that could only sound so good. The sum of the parts really do matter. If you design a speaker without a crossover, you're gonna have compromises. That woofer is gonna be operating out of its linear operation region. It could be going into a breakup mode that you're not filtering that becomes audible, maybe not at low volume levels, but as you crank it up, if you notice a lot of inexpensive speakers, when you crank it up, the sound kind of gets all blurred together or it just doesn't sound coherent and you don't hear the separation of details as much. That's many factors that could do that. That's when you have bad breakup modes and drivers that aren't properly contained with a good crossover or with proper dampening materials in the drivers. So I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to get too complicated in this topic. We've got tons of videos on our YouTube channel that talk about this. In fact, we did an hour and a half video interview with Shane Rich from RBH Sound. And he talked about how they dampen resonances in their drivers, the kind of processes they do with their cone material, the geometry of the cone, the surround. I mean, there's so much involved in making a really excellent performing speaker. And usually when you want the very best in performance in anything in life, it's gonna cost you more money. So I hope that kind of answers some questions for you guys. If you have any questions, uh, you know, give us some comments down below. Tell us what you think is the price point uh, like your breaking point in loudspeakers. How much are you willing to spend for performance versus spending five times the amount and maybe only getting a 5% increase in performance? I'd like to know your opinions down below, what experiences you have with inexpensive versus very expensive speakers. Don't forget guys, we have a Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. You can go there if you become a member, you get access to our content sooner than it comes on YouTube or on audioholics.com. You could also ask us questions, we give you quicker responses there. We also take suggestions on video topics you'd like to cover. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it, please share it. The YouTube policy lately is favoring the big corporations and if we don't get like, a lot of likes and shares, the traffic kind of drops off after a few days. So I appreciate you guys spreading the word, watching our other related videos. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.